Hey guys, welcome back. I am Valora Rochelle and I am back with another tutorial. And today we're going to be making this lovely beaded necklace. It's a uh, beaded stitch twisted uh, necklace with some decorative uh, tribal craft beads throughout. Okay, I have a few made already. So far, this takes me like one hour to make one. So I've made three so far. If you guys are interested in this tutorial, stay tuned. Okay guys, so I am back. Uh, I have my camera flipped around today. Um, so for this necklace, as you can see here, I have two seed beads here, the same size. And we're gonna um, go with color A. So color A, we'll say is our light gold. And then color B will be this assorted darker brown. Okay. But I believe this is more kind of yellow, but we'll say gold, golden yellow. And then we have our little decorative pieces. And I did, so this necklace is about 20 inches. So the standard necklace size when I looked it up was about 18 and that will sit right at your collarbone. But I wanted it to be a little bit, um, a little bit longer. Um, just to account for the pieces that I have on there as well. So this is gonna be about 20 inches long. So every two inches, um, give or take, I place one of these decorative beads. And to get my um, sizing right, what you do is you wanna, so say this one here is at four inches. As you're going along, you want to sit your next bead down at the six or, you know, just make sure it's two inches apart and just keep going until I have that bead sitting right at the middle of the six and just keep going until you get to that point. Because as you can see, these beads are different sizes. Okay, round, small. So that's how I hit my mark. Okay. So you may not always have to be two inches like right here, between here and here for these beads to sit perfectly. And then there are no beads at the very end. There are no beads at the very end. And then we close it with our jump ring and our lobster clasp on this side. All right. So for this, I use some mono cord clear monocord right here. I actually got this from Walmart. So it says eight pounds, 3.6 kilograms. This is the bulk pack. So I cut about 110 inches and I'm using this really small sewing needle. And because this, so this monocord is almost like the fishing line. It's just really thin, it's thinner. Um, and it's kind of plastic. So it has a habit of slipping out of my sewing needle. So I actually tied a knot here. So when you tie your knot, depending on what uh, size beads you're using, make sure it's really tight, okay? So if you, if you um, can't tie a knot, because sometimes the knot can make it difficult for this needle to go through the bead, just make sure you're holding um, your cord in place so it doesn't slip out, okay? It just means you have to take your time. All right, so that's really all we need for right now, and we'll get started. So the first thing you wanna do, I'm just pulling through to get to the other end. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up a color A. So one color A bead. And then one color B. Uh-oh. So one color A and one color B, like this. 
bring those beads all the way to the end. Got to get through 110 inches of thread. Okay, so we're to the end. So leave about four, six inches to this side over here. Because although we're gonna knot this off, I like to thread um, my excess back through my work, okay? So just leave yourself a little X, some little room to work with there. So now we're gonna take our needle and we are gonna go through the first bead that we put on, which is color A only, only color A. That's it, like this. Go through color A, pull through. See, got stuck there a little bit. Put that there. And pull all 110 inches. As we go along, this uh, cord will get shorter. So this is what it looks like like this. Then we're gonna pick up a color B and go through the B bead, okay? So our string is coming out of our A right here. We're gonna pick up a color B. And go through color B. like this so it looks like we have like a little triangle right here so from at this point you can then tie off make a few knots and tie off right here Just tie off at the bottom. But I am gonna go through all of these beads and come back out on this side just one time and then tie it off. You don't have to do that. Just go through. All the beads. So now we are back where we started. Now I'm going to tie off. You do a surgeon's knot if you want to make it more secure. I normally do like three or four knots. Make sure it's tight. So basically what we did, um, so after every um, decorative bead, we're gonna start our pattern off from square one, just like what we just did. You put on your A, B, and then you come back through um, with the B. So now I'm gonna thread up through our A. So we want the needle to always be coming up through our A bead. Just wanna roll our string through. Okay, so as you can see, we have two Bs on this side, and then our A is by itself. 
So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna continue to pick up A, B, A, B. So we're gonna pick up A. B. And we are gonna go through the thread here. You're not going through the beads, you're going through the thread that's here. Maybe hard to see on camera, but you know we're using clear cord. Make sure that the thread that's coming out, that you're holding it tight, because you don't want that loose, okay? Because if it's loose, your beads will come right through that piece of thread. So I normally wrap this piece around my finger and I hold it here. And then we lost our blue, our B bead okay so we're back on so i have my a and a b and a b going through this thread only making sure that this stays tight because i'm holding it through my fingers here pull through i stick the needle in the beads because this thread is long so i don't have to always keep searching for my end Okay, so now you see these are sitting right on top of each other. And then all you do is you go up A. So it's always go up A. Then you put on A bead, B bead, do the thread, then up A. And you just keep doing that. And if you didn't have your decorative beads and you just wanted your necklace just to be the twisting um, effect, you can just do that all the way into your desired length. And that's essentially what we're just going to do. Go up A. And then you're going to start to see the twisting effect. You can kind of see it doing it now, but we'll put on some more beads. So I'm holding my thread that's coming through. I'm going to pick up an A bead, a B. Go through the thread. Now be careful, this thread does get a little tangly. So, there. Just like this. Hopefully this is an okay color for a tutorial. If I do any more of these, maybe I'll do a darker color. So you guys can see, you know, I've got some lint in there. Okay. Okay, and then we're gonna go up A. And that's what it looks so A, B. As you can see, B is gonna start, it's starting to twist already. So this is actually pretty easy, as long as you hold everything nice and tight as you're doing it. Just a heads up, this thread is gonna get caught on everything until it starts to get shorter. Okay, and then we're gonna go up the A bead. Yeah, so make sure you have a good working space. See that? And when I feel like I'm getting kind of close to my um, two inches, I will put on my first decorative bead. And hold my thread, go through here.
Okay, you also wanna make sure that they're sitting right on top of each other, even though they're gonna be twisting. So your A should always be on top of A, and your B should always be on top of B. Okay, then we go back up through A. See my um, needle got stuck, that's fine. Just hold it and pull through. The um, thing is, when you're going through this thread that's here, you just wanna make sure your beads don't go through that, that part. So that's why it's important to hold this down because this, if it's loose, see, that lifts up like that. So you hold this tight. But once the beads are sitting on top, then you're good. But you just have to wait and hold it tight. So I would normally just, like I said, put it between my fingers. Put the thread through. Um, so if you notice that your beads come through, it's okay, push your beads back out. Hold, it, hold um, your thread tight and then keep going. Okay, so we already have our twisting effect taking place. Make sure it's tight. Okay. See, sometimes they get twisted and they go the wrong way. So you just twist them and make sure just that they fall one on top of the other. So A on top of A and B on top of B. And then we'll go up through A. There we go. 
So let's do a, a lymph check and see where we are. I'm just doing two inches. So I just pick a number, so six. Okay, and then we have some ways to go. So let me, so this is sorted bead um, mix. Had some beads that were quite larger than others. So my larger um, pieces, I made those my center uh, pieces. So we'll wait until we get to the 10 inch mark and we'll put this green one on. And then the rest are all about the same size. I just randomly, actually I might use the elephant as a centerpiece. I didn't know that was in there. Okay. We always have these. Let me just look at one. So as you can see, this one's kind of lengthy. So I'm going to put this one. We'll start off with this one. Put that on the four. And I put it right in the middle of the four because that's where it's going to fall. Right in the middle of two inches. Back up so you can see. That right in the middle of four. And then this is our six. So we can probably do one or two more. And then we'll put that bead on. Let's see. Where it gets caught on everything. Okay, so we're hitting right at the bead. Okay, so now I know at this point I'm going to add on my bead. So you simply just put it on. And now we're gonna start over. So remember at the beginning, we did A, B, and go through A, and that's all we're gonna do. So pick up an A, pick up a B. Let the Bs fall. I do want to hold these beads in place. I'm going to go through A only. You'll see how it wants to stop up there. And you just slide it down. It'll slide down. So usually you can slide your work up and down. So if it was like two or like two, usually it slides up and down because it's not really secure yet. And then after a few, then it holds down. So we just wanna push it down. Like this. And then on this next step, I want my B to go through the B bead.
So as you can see, I have my A on the left side and the B on the right for this part. And it's just, um, just makes it easier for me. And then we'll flip it around. Uh-oh, do we have a knot? Okay. What's going on here? It gets tangled. There we go. And it lifted up again. I'm just gonna push it back down. And then also, so you can keep going from this point on, but see this bead is kind of like off by doing its own thing. It's kind of floating. Which is fine. At first, I kind of left it that way, and then I kind of thought about it. And I was like, nah, I kind of want it to look like it's attached to here. So what I did was I went back down through this bead, and I just took the um, string around the two um, beads here, and then I went back up through A. Because essentially, we're going to go back up through A um, so we can start our stitch. So that's what I'm going to do. Let me find my other end. Even though I see the needle, I don't pick it up because I don't want any tangles. So I just follow it, the thread, until I get to my needle. Okay. And it may seem like it's going to be loose, but trust me, everything's going to tighten up. So I'm going to go down through this bead. I'm just going to go down through the first yellow bead. Or bead A. Doesn't matter which one you go through first, as long as you go through both of them and you come back up. So we'll go through A and then this B, come back up. And when I come back up, we're going through the A B because remember we always go through the A B. So that's what I'm gonna do. Since that bead wants to flop around, we'll make that one the next one. <laughs> Put that there. Okay, so we pull tight, and that's that. And okay, there we go. And this cord is um, thin, so just pay attention to your thread and make sure it's not pulling on any of the other beads. Make sure everything goes through. Okay, so we have our twisting effect started. We have, just like when we first started, we have our A and the two B beads. So now we're just gonna keep continuing on the same process. I'm gonna hold my thread tight Pick up an A and pick up a B. Go through the thread. And it just falls in place. And then we're gonna go back up through A. And do it again. Just make sure your A is on the right when you're doing this and your B is on the left. So, after you start, you flip it. And I'm right-handed, as you can see. So.
and it's twisting. Always make sure you go back up the A B before you put your beads on. So if you see that it's not looking right, um, just backtrack your steps to make sure you went up through the A bead. Because I forgot a couple of times. So if I did it, I know somebody out there is probably going to do it as well. And these get twisted sometimes, so there we go. You just fix them. Especially when you're going fast. When you pull the thread through fast, they'll just get tangled a little bit. They just get twisted. That's fine. There we go. Okay, you see what I mean here? When my beads went under the thread because this was loose, or well, it got loose. So I'm just gonna push those beads under that thread and then pull tight. So, see I didn't undo everything. I just caught it and I fixed it. Okay. Okay, so we have our bead here, our next bead here. And I kind of just want to check. So we'll just use a five and a seven. I just want two inches. So there, we'll go a little more. I'll go like three times and then we'll check again. Twist it as they do sometimes. So I have to look really close at the thread and untwist it. Because some of the color B beads are kind of close in color to this A bead. Okay. Okay, so from here, I don't know what happened. So when that happens, I just go back out. That's the only thing with this uh, cord, it's so tangly, so you just have to be careful. That's why I'm so excited whenever I get some length going. Okay. Now we 
gonna undo this part. Okay, back where we started. So sometimes you can save it, sometimes it just looks like a mess and it's like, just start over. <laughs> so there we go, everything's untangled. And then also this cord gets a little twisty after a while. So you may have to just like pick up your work and let the uh, thread untwist itself. It's hard to do it now because I will actually have to sit it over to the side because the table's in the way. Or I can just follow this thread, this cord through and untwist it. Because sometimes if you start having a lot of tangle problems it's just because of that this thread starts to get twisted as we're doing our little pattern here all right so let's do a lift check so that's at the seven and then we want to get to five so i think we can do one more and then we'll put that bead on Seven and the five. Okay. And since this is like a flower, I'm gonna make sure that this flower, when it's on, that is sitting up and down. Going to repeat. I'm gonna pick up an A, pick up a B, bring these beads down because now we're starting over. Go through the A. is flipped we have a on the left B on the right and then we're gonna pick up a B go down B go through the B I should say like that and then we're gonna go down the bead through a Gonna be a little loose, we're gonna pull everything tight. There we go. So we snap that back in place. And we're coming through here. And just make sure everything's tight. So remember it's loose down here. So as you saw, I 
push this bead down and then I pull my thread down. So that just makes everything tight. Okay, so we went down through the A. We're gonna go back up through the BB right here. and up through A, so we can start our pattern. Okay, I'm gonna flip it around. Make sure I don't pull that too tight, so they don't get, oh, I think it's the thread. It keeps getting caught. There we go. Yeah, that. When you see that the beads look funny, look at your thread because it's clear. It's probably caught on one of the other beads. There we go. All right. Okay, guys. So I'm just going to keep continuing on until we get to the end. And then I'll come back and I'll attach the lobster uh, clasp and the jump rings. Okay. Um, like I said, for the center piece, when you get to um, about 10 inches, so every two inches you want to put on your decorative bead, when you get to your 10 inch mark, if you have a, a main focus bead, you can put that in the center. And then you just continue on. Okay? Um, so I'll be back. Alright guys, so I am back. I have completed my necklace. I'm going to show you guys how to end it. So I have 20 inches and I stopped here. This is what you will see. So to close it, all you're going to do is pick up one B bead and connect it there. Right into the... Uh, the other bead bead. So let's pick the bead bead. Go down the bead. Okay, and then we kind of want to make it a little more tight. So we're going to go back up through the A. Cross over to this bead. The needle just got caught with that uh, knot that's on the end. Okay, so now your end should look like this. And then we just start making our knots going down our work. And I normally do like three or four. So we can start and put one actually right here. If you want to go down a few beads and then put your knot, it's completely up to, up to you, this part. It's completely up to you. Uh oh, gotta make the knot. And just pull tight. So this became loose, if you notice when I had went through, I didn't make the knot. So that's an easy fix. I'm just going to go through this bead down here, because sometimes it gets extra loose. There you go. And you just connect them. So sometimes it's hard to hold um, your work together. On that side, I'm gonna cross over to go through this side. Seems like when you get on camera, <laughs> everything wants to act up. Okay, so we got that. I'm gonna make a knot right here. And 
and I have a tripod right in front of me. So I'm actually reaching out to do this. Usually this would be much closer to me. So we've made a couple of knots so far. I'll just keep going down. And on one of these knots, you want to do a surgeon's knot, which means you just do a double knot. So you go one, two, and then pull tight. And I'm gonna keep going down. I'll do one more knot. I just have, I have a good amount of thread left, so I'm just, I'm able to go work it down a little bit more. That's all. If you want all your knots at the top of your work, that's completely fine. Make a knot. Okay, now I'm just gonna go down my work and I'm gonna cut my thread. So I'll cut about here. And when you cut, push down, hang on, push down on your work with your scissors so that your thread isn't just sticking out of the bead. It kind of pulls everything tight. I didn't mean to snap it. Um, so that way the thread kind of hides in, in the bead. Like so that's this side. And then remember the other end where we left this thread out. So all you do is, so you knotted it off, right? So you can actually just thread through and cut, or you can cut um, and put you some um, jewelry glue there um, if you cut right at the knot. But I'm not gonna do that. And this thread is pretty like firm and flexible, so I don't need the needle. I'm just gonna go through a few beads, put a couple of knots, and then I'm gonna cut just how I did on the other side. And push that back. This side is short. Push that back through so I can make my knot. And I'm far away. sure I get the knot in the right spot. There we go. Like that. And just gonna keep going down. And this knot is short, so I'll We'll make our knots close together. So I'll do a double knot right here. One. And two. And pull tight. And I'll do one more and I'll cut it. Or actually I can just cut it now. Because it already has a major knot right here. So we did our two additional knots. But hey, you can make all the knots you want, as long as you have enough thread. And just push down, it's gonna come out at some point. Oh, it's right here.
Okay, I'm just gonna cut right here. Push down and then cut. Okay, so then we're gonna grab our jump rings and our lobster, so two jump rings and your lobster clasp. Now these two jump rings are a little small. I may have some larger ones, but I was able to get these to fit. I'm just gonna use them just to um, show you how to close your work for this video. And these come came already open a little bit. I'm gonna open it a little bit more just because I have to get through the bead and the, um, so it's just a twist. It's just back and forth with the jump ring. You don't open it wide. So I'm just gonna put this in there. Put on the jump ring. I'm sorry, put on the lobster clasp. Attach it to the jump ring. And then we're gonna close it. Now this is pretty, this one's a small, this is a, um, Gonna be tight. It's going through the bead. There we go. And we got that closed. Okay. And I kind of like turn it to make sure. Sometimes I'll turn it so that opening is inside the bead. So that way, everything's secure. And then we're gonna put our other end on, which will just be the jump ring by itself. So we'll give that lobster class some, something to hold on to. And that's it. So now you have yourself a unique necklace made out of beads. All right, guys, don't forget to check out my uh, online store. I will be, um, you may not see some of these new products that I just posted on the website. I am gonna get that out today, okay? But I do have some other cool items on there that you guys can check out. And I will catch you next time. Bye.